Hi, this is Sabin Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. And today we have with us Thomas Giacomo, President of Engineering and Innovation at SUSE. And if I'm not wrong, last week uh, there was an announcement by Cloud Foundry uh, Community, which is CubeCF. Uh, and that project actually, you know, originated at SUSE. So I want to quickly uh, talk about the origins of the project and why SUSE decided, you know, to put it in the Cloud Foundry as an incubation project. Yeah, you're right. So it started at SUSE quite a while ago, actually, since we've um, the acquisition of the of the some of the HPE assets back in 2017, 2018. It was um, we've started to work with the the team there, uh, coming also from Active State, and from the very beginning, we wanted to provide the Cloud Foundry developer experience, the Cloud Foundry push experience to uh, Kubernetes clusters and Kubernetes infrastructure. So it, it was from the beginning, um, and it was not that easy because Cloud Foundry was designed as a platform, including container orchestration. Uh, so we had to make some tweaks uh, in the way that both things would be also certified. Like we didn't want to have an uncertified Cloud Foundry distribution, but we wanted to make it more Kubernetes native from day one. And so we've done that for a couple of years. Uh, improving the technology, containerizing Cloud Foundry, working with the Cloud Foundry community, because at the same time, Cloud Foundry was evolving and also having more features, more capabilities. And along the way, we've started to work with partners, with IBM, with SAP. Um, we also started to work on um, having an alternative to the Kubernetes um, container infrastructure called Diego, right? So that's the project Irene. And so for us at SUSE, it's always better to work inside the community than outside. So SUSE Cloud Foundry was already open source. It was already on GitHub. We were already working with partners. But it's a lot better when you're part of the foundation uh, for the community, for the governance, to get more contributions and also more interactions with other partners and other Cloud Foundry technologies. So I think um, the technology has been mature for a while. And uh, it was time to 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 do that um, and, and get some inputs and also contributions from other people. Traditionally, people some people would look at Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes as kind of competing platform, but the fact is a lot of users they use both. Uh, how does KubeCF bridge that uh, gap further? How does it allow people to leverage both Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes? There are different use cases. Sometimes you need a Cloud Foundry for a 12 factor application at a time and Cloud Native application. Sometimes you just need to have a container infrastructure, but most of the companies, they need both. And what, what was happening uh, or what is still happening most of the time is that the two, they have two different platforms that are not directly connected to each other. They have to operate two different platforms. Their applications and data are running on two different platforms. And that's what we wanted to avoid, so providing uh, the two technologies together so that you could run some of the application and develop some of the applications with Cloud Foundry, or you could run some of the containerized application directly on Kubernetes, do some migration over time, potentially as well, but with the same platform, with the same operational processes, the same dashboard, the same monitoring, it's also why we are spending a lot of time and, and, and work on Stratos, uh, which is a Cloud Foundry user interface, but which can also monitor and, and, and manage Kubernetes cluster now so that you provide the same experience uh, for that platform, irrespective of your, if you're only doing Kubernetes or Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry together. And, uh, and it makes things a lot simpler. Uh, actually. I was talking to Chip Childers uh, at the Cloud Foundry Foundation two days ago, and it was like KubeCF is more or less like a Kubernetes native distribution of Cloud Foundry. Uh, uh, when we talk about distribution, it first of all, um, t traditionally, uh, uh, community like C uh, CNCF or Linux Foundation or Cloud Foundry, they don't come up with their own distribution. You know, it's the vendors who create the distribution. With distribution, the problem happens is that, you know, interoperability or, you know, vendor lock-in risk, you know, and that's why, you know, a lot of communities, they come with the compliance or, so that it doesn't really matter what distribution a user is using, they can usually easily move their workload. So if it is a distribution, how do you ensure that these kind of problems will not be there? Yeah, and, and that's that's extremely important. So that's one of the benefits of open source projects is to make sure that 
when you go from one platform to the other platform from a different vendor, you don't have to redo everything. And so from the very beginning, when we've started to containerize Cloud Foundry, we wanted to make sure that it was Cloud Foundry certified, that we are providing the same functionalities, the same compatibility, the same interfaces that traditional upstream Cloud Foundry would do. And actually, uh, we did from, from the very beginning. Now, uh, same with the Kubernetes aspect. So those two things have to be, to be interoperable and, and certified. Um, I would say as well that the, um, um, the container make it a little bit easier as well to have compatibility at the application level, right? Because uh, by nature, container are, are interop well, I mean, they can run on different platforms. Um, Cloud Foundry was already run C compatible uh, or run C compliant. Uh, it was actually the first platform to be run C compliant when the Linux Foundation, Suzo and a few others started the Open Container Initiative. I don't remember when exactly, but a few years ago. So um, that's actually a key part of the job of, of contributions to open source is to make sure that you don't break that because uh, otherwise, I mean, it, it's not helping anybody. It's not helping users. We are doing the same with Stratos, for instance. So Stratos is the SUSE Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes uh, dashboard, if you want, but it's also working with upstream Cloud Foundry, upstream Kubernetes, other vendors Cloud Foundry, other vendors Kubernetes. And actually we see some other companies outside of SUSE using some pieces of technologies that SUSE initiated uh, with their own offering. And uh, that's also one of the benefits of open source is that not everybody has to redo it, the entire thing. We contribute to each other's products in a way. And uh, and that's that's key. So the certification program in CNCF, the certification program of the Cloud Foundry Foundation have to be met. Uh, to me, that's a prerequisite. I'm, I'm, I don't want to ship any SUSE product if it's not certified by the by the open source foundation that it that it uses. The Cloud Foundry community, you know, like any other open source community, you know, they are like you know organization uh, bodies there, and then there are vendors, and then there is another ecosystem where you know, there are a lot of consultancy that is happening uh, out there. Though there are company like Stack and Main, there are company like Anynice, you know. So, what does Cube CF mean to those companies? Well, they've been a lot of them have been working with us uh, for a while as well, actually. Uh, and Alturos, Engineer Better, Any9, Stark and Wayne, we've been working with them. They've been working with us on on training materials. So they have a huge knowledge about the Cloud Foundry technology and how it's used by real life companies. And uh, that is also directly applicable to what we're doing. They have a lot of knowledge around Kubernetes, so it's just a matter of bridging the gaps and uh, and the different way to deliver Cloud Foundry and to manage Cloud Foundry than in the past. But they've been with us from, from the very beginning uh, as well. So actually some of our training materials are being done by them and uh, they are training our customers, our partners, they are tra training the community. Uh, they, are, they, they are a very important part of the Cloud Foundry ecosystem because it's not only about the technology and the platform, but it's, it's about also adapting processes in enterprise for software development, uh, some best practices there, or some inter integration with their CI/CD or other DevOps tools they might have. So that's that's key because you cannot really adopt just the technology without having some some help and guidance from uh, service companies like the ones you mentioned. Can you talk a bit about how do things work at Cloud Foundry from incubation? What is the next step? And uh, uh, is uh, if the incubation stage, does it give confidence to companies or organizations to use the project or should they wait for it to get graduated? Yeah, so the the, uh, the way the foundation is working is that we have incubation projects, extension projects, and CF core. Um, and so most of the time what's in incubation is incubation. Uh, but in that case, kubectf has been mature from like a couple of years already, and it's being used in commercial products. Um, I mean, the, the predecessor of kubectf was STF, Fissile, and it's been around for many years. What we are doing now with kubectf is improving it, modernizing it, but the core of the technology has been really mature, um, using Helm charts, using CF operators now as well, and uh, it's already part of, of, of some commercial products. Uh, so I, 
I believe it will move very soon uh, to, from incubation to, to, to core. Now, the, um, we also have to make sure that back to the discussion about uh, certification and interoperability, we don't want to break that by forcing kubectl to be the de facto way to deploy Cloud Foundry uh, and uh, because there are also distributions of Cloud Foundry that are not using it. And so that's mostly why it's in incubation today and it's not really part of the core. It's to, to have a transition from the previous ways of developing, deploying Cloud Foundry and the Kubernetes native way. Is it like the final destination of the journey or you'll continue to see the evolution or iteration of these two projects? Because they're also part of the same family, which is Linux Foundation. So I think it's the, the, it's a good start. And there's not only kubectl. Uh, we, we mentioned Irene to be able to plug Kubernetes natively as the container orchestrator for Cloud Foundry. Uh, there is Quarks. We have uh, extensions to Irene as well. And Kubernetes is not standing still. Cloud Foundry is not standing still. Uh, you can think about also event framework or serverless frameworks. So things will keep moving and there's still work, work to be done in kubectl um, to, to today. And there will still be work to be done to bring Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry even better together in, in the future, like in terms of sharing services, maybe sharing the same service mesh uh, solution and, um, and the same serverless framework potentially in the future as well. Uh, some of the things that are sitting on top of Kubernetes today, I'm thinking about Kubeflow or other things, uh, would also be part of that ecosystem. And uh, there will always be better ways to, to improve this, those inter integrations. There's one piece of, of uh, technology that I'm thinking about as well is the um, all the work that CDF is doing for CI/CD with Jenkins X, Tecton, uh, that are also very closely integrated or let's say interface with Kubernetes and bring, bridging that with kubectl or other technologies together with the Cloud Foundry features for developers is going to be very important. So I think it will keep on being developed and improved and uh, also extended to adopt those new things that are coming in the cloud native scape. Thomas, uh, once again, thank you for taking your time out and uh, discussing kubectl. Uh, As I said earlier, I really miss seeing you, but I sh I'm sure once this crisis is over, uh, we will be seeing you and we will uh, continue to talk about open source SUSE and all the work that is going on there. Thank you once again.